Hungary has got strong pronatal policies, but I seem to hear the difference of opinion. Some people say that it hasn't really fixed their falling birth rates. Some people say that it stopped them from falling or perhaps that they even recovered slightly, but that there are other very promising um, changes such as increased um, marriage rates and way, way lower rates of abortion. And that was almost as a secondary effect. The, the government apparently were not actually um, specifically targeting abortions or marriage. They were just fi- really just focusing on the birth rates. Do we actually have the data or some sort of consensus whether the policies of the Hungary did work or they didn't work? Well, I think you've summed it up very well, actually, and you're obviously well informed on the subject. So Lyman Stone did some work showing that actually the increase in the fertility rate in Hungary was largely not third children or fourth children, whereas, in fact, a lot of the earlier benefits were targeted at third and fourth children. That's one piece of data. Another is that although the Hungarian fertility rate has risen, it hasn't really necessarily risen in a very different way to that of Romania or the Czech, Czech and Slovak republics. Um, in all those cases, what's happened with the rise from, say, 1.2 to, say, 1.4, 1.5, is something called the tempo effect very largely, which is when women are delaying having their children. Uh, over that period, in those years, the fertility rate is depressed. When that starts to end, when it starts to stabilise, because people have gone from having kids in their mid-20s on average to, say, their early to mid-30s, once that stabilises, there's a kick-up. And actually, the period of depression was a bit artificial. Uh, if you, and if you look at the cohorts, completed fertility, it's always a bit backward looking. You'd find that there wasn't really a dip and a rise. It was just what was going on in those years of TFR falling and rising was a delay in childbearing. People, We know in lots and lots of developed countries, there's been a big drop in early pregnancy and a big rise in late pregnancy, but they don't compensate for each other. So overall fertility has come down at the end of a, a, a fertile period. But the effect on the TFR is... A, so the fact that Hungary has gone down and then up uh, with all these pronatal, very expensive pronatal policies, but no more so than the surrounding countries, doesn't give what... Plus the lime and stone point on um, the benefits of, of, of third children, doesn't give you that much optimism about the policies. On the other hand, I think you're absolutely right. It seems to have had more impact at the second order. Something's happening in Hungary around marriages, around births within uh, wedlock. Um, I don't know the abortion figures, but I can believe that goes with falling abortion. Um, And I'm not sure that you can get a rebound of the fertility rate without these changes of values, perhaps a shift to more traditional values. We'll have to see. It's always very imperfect. You never know exactly which policy has caused a rise in fertility or prevented a fall in fertility, or maybe fertility rose for some other reason. So in all respects, I'm just a little bit suspicious about the actual effects of the policies. But I think where you have a government very positively signaling that it's very important to us as a nation to reproduce ourselves, it can only have a positive effect on the culture and therefore ultimately on the fertility rate. I'm wondering whether these policies have actually been around for long enough to start influencing the culture, because the the culture doesn't take months to change. That will take years. So I suppose it is. uh, This is not a next day delivery kind of change that we are looking at. This is going to take years and years and perhaps decades um, to reverse and to fix.